The most rugged fighter of World War II, the P-47 Thunderbolt, also known as the Jug, was one heck of an aircraft that could withstand major damage and it downed around 4,000 enemy aircraft during World War II in the European theater. This particular story begins on June 26, 1943 with the 56th Fighter Group that was out to escort bombers back home from Germany. Robert S. Johnson was flying Blue 4 at the tail end of the formation. He was new to aerial combat and when they were within 15 miles inside of France, he looks back and sees 16 Buckwolf 190s approaching. Johnson tries to radio his formation. He gets no answer. He tries to radio again, but suddenly he was being hammered with bullets. His canopy was shattered. He was hit. His P-47 starts spinning out of control. Fires were raging. His instruments were destroyed. But with all this, incredibly, he pulls out of the death spiral. Though his canopy was jammed, he could not exit the shot at P-47. His fate was now tied to that of his aircraft. And this is when he realized the fires had went out and though losing slight altitude, the P-47 was still flying. Then at his four o'clock, to his dismay, he sees a single Falk Wolf 190 with a yellow nose approaching him. His heart sinks, and though he didn't know it at the time, the German pilot was the ace Egon Meyer, one of the deadliest flyers of the Luftwaffe. With 66 confirmed kills, looking at what should be number 67 in Thompson and his wounded bird. Meyer closes in for an easy kill. The tough, rugged P-47 was the largest, most powerful single seat aircraft built during the war. The engine in this P-47 was the vaunted Pratt & Whitney R2800 18 cylinder radial engine pumping out over 2000 horsepower and coupled with a supercharger wielding even greater power. It was called the jug because the nose looked like a jug due to the size to house that huge engine. The jug was built like a tank. It had eight 50 caliber machine guns, four in each wing. And the rugged build of the P-47 brought pilots home time and time again. And now, Robert Johnson is dependent on this ruggedness to survive this battle. Meyer gets on his six o'clock, squeezes the trigger, and bullets start pounding the jug. He is being showered. Meyer then accidentally overshoots, giving Johnson one chance to get a burst off at Meyer, though it was no good. The 190 easily gets back onto Johnson's tail again, but then pulls up alongside the P-47, surveying the damage that the plane had taken and waved at Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson thought it was over until he realized that the German pilot was getting back on his six o'clock. Start Meyer started firing again, but the P-47 was staying airborne and sustaining all the damage Egon Meyer could give it. All of a sudden, Meyer pulls up on Johnson's wing a second time. Waving at Johnson again, and then he gets back on the P-47's tail. Using his rudder to rake bullets from wingtip to wingtip, back and forth, Egon Meyer spent all of his ammunition, but yet the P-47 was still airborne. And then for a third time, Egon Meyer pulls alongside Johnson and starts to rock his wings back and forth in a salute to Robert S. Johnson and his wounded Thunderbolt. Johnson realizes this battle is over and makes it to the English Channel 
and finally makes it to his air base. Later on, Johnson decided he wanted to count the bullet holes, but when he had reached 200 without even moving, he just gave up. There were too many. Robert S. Johnson went on to become the U.S.'s second highest scoring ace in the European campaign with 27 kills in his P-47 Thunderbolt. How ironic how it all started with Robert S. Johnson denying Egon Meyer his 67th kill in his P-47 Thunderbolt, the jug. Well, there you go, guys. We hope you enjoyed this new little segment that we're uh, we're going to kind of pursue. Um, be sure to do the YouTube things, you know, like, sub, noti bell, all that jazz. And, uh, yeah, definitely helps us out. So, until next time.